Hey, fellas. <sighs> I'm tired. I'm so tired. So I'm going to make this super fast because I feel also very scattered and um, I feel like I could have a tendency to ramble and go off track, get off topic. So I'm going to try and make this fast as possible. Um, it was a cold day, super cold. It was like, I think the high was like three. Um, I did DoorDash. As luck would have it, I was able to spend a good portion of the day in the hills. Um, and it was significantly warmer up there. Um, I was like, kind of like in back of Idaho Springs and it was like 17, like 20 degrees up there. And then I got down to Genesee or Chief Hosa. It was Genesee. It was like minus two. I was like, fuck. And then I had another order, which took me back up. And I'm like, right on. And um, so then by the time I was done, I mean, um... You know, I, I had a couple of really more good orders, and then I wanted to finish kind of early because I had some errands to run, and I ran my errands, and, um, you know, I was like, I don't know what it is about that damn 6th Avenue frontage road, but I was going, I was driving to the mall, and I was behind, I was like, I had finished, and... I was driving to the mall to do my errands and um, got behind this damn guy in this truck on the frontage road and he, he was just tootling along and I'm like, oh my God. And there was a stream of cars behind me and we're going like, I don't know, I think we were going maybe 34. I think we, we maxed 34. And I'm like, you know what, I'm not even gonna, not even gonna let it upset me. And you know, he was, he was all in his truck with some chick and they're all like chatty chattersons. And I'm like, I'm not even gonna let it upset me. I'm just gonna drive slow and we'll get there when we get there. But then, you know, he's all like at the Indiana and the light at Indiana. And you know, he's like in the right turn lane. So you can turn right on red. If there's no cars coming, there's no cars coming. He's just sitting there. I'm like, come on. Come on fuck nuts and I'm like no I can't say stuff like that anymore can't call people stuff like that anymore and so I was like oh, I bet they're going out to dinner for Valentine's Day so I started lovingly imagining stuff for them you know they're going to dinner for Valentine's Day they're going out on their Valentine's Day and you know and they're gonna have a nice dinner and he got her flowers and she got him some candy and, you know, and they're probably going to get some. <laughs> so good for them. So, and that put me in a good mood. I was like, oh, how sweet. And went and did my errands. And even though it was cold, you know, I feel, I feel super blessed. I think that, you know, I think that the whole meditation thing is, um, becoming something that is imperative for my self-care for my health and um you know i i just can't give it enough credit i can't be i'm so grateful for stumbling into it you know it's uh it's really strange because you know it's funny how things start you know i started getting into Dr. Joe, um, really getting into him like a year ago. And, you know, he, he talked about in the, um, becoming supernatural. He talks about, um, how meditation is, is he, he says that you have to master meditation for this to work, for these concepts to work. You have to be able to, to, give yourself and be committed to mastering these meditation, this meditation or meditation in general, you know, and I was like, okay, well, so I started like playing with it, you know, and started trying to, you know, get better at it. And, you know, I kind of was like, 
didn't commit 100%, you know, daily life and being in a unhealthy relationship and, you know, all that. Um, it just kind of like, but I still, I still meditated more than I didn't. And so, um, and I still, still really worked on, you know, and he talked about, um, feeding yourself positive shit constantly, just constantly feeding yourself positive, like stimulating spiritually evolutionary type of stuff, stuff that's going to keep your vibrations not only at a, an even keel, but also start elevating them so that, and then keeping them on that even keel and meditation is so important for that. And so, um, I haven't talked about vibrations in a long time, but I think that that's what that is. It's, it's, it's making sure that those vibrations are, are, are at that state where all this nasty lower vibration shit is not going to, you know, knock you off kilter, you know, and I don't know if anybody's ever heard of pendulums, but you know, I feel like when you, when you are at that higher level vibration, pendulums aren't as detrimental to you. You're more able to deal with them and, and it's the meditation. It's the meditation. It's absolutely the meditation because, um, you know, part of the first part of the meditation is the induction and, you know, it's, it's basically teaching your body to what it feels like just to be chill, just to be like, you know, um, because most people, me being one of those most people are addicted to, um, the chemicals that stress produces that, that flight or fight, the chemicals that, 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 that are induced from being in a constant stressful situation and so our bodies become addicted to those chemicals and therefore it's going to you know allow yourself to be triggered so that your brain will produce more of those chemicals so that your body gets its fix and so, um, in the meditation you do, like the first part, like I said, is the induction and it, it, um, it's a technique that puts your body in this state from like head to toe of complete relaxation. I mean, so relaxed that you don't even notice that you are a body. You are consciousness. You are, you are nothing but, you're not even a thought. You're just there. And so you, I mean, it, it, it just teaches you what it's like to be completely chill just you know you and so your body is just like you feel nothing you feel nothing so then when you are like triggered by something in your like everyday world you start noticing that it manifests first as a feeling in your body and a very uncomfortable feeling, but something also that is familiar and something that at once, one, one point or another, you, the body liked it. And so the body's like, okay, let's, you know, keep this up so we can keep getting more of that. But now it's more like, okay, I feel like I recognize it now as a feeling. It starts as a feeling. I know what this feeling is. And before my mind has an opportunity to attach a thought to that, I'm like, no, change. And it, it, it like, it, I don't know, I feel like it's like a, a, a smack almost, like, mm-mm. 
and it gives me an opportunity to recognize that that is the next step. The next step is me freaking out and getting all like fretful about shit and going down that path so that my mind is just like continuously releasing those chemicals, those stressors and my body is good, you know? And so I'm like, nope, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen this time. And so then the feeling starts to die down. And, and also if a thought happens to escape, I will allow myself to sit with it and sit with the feelings and come up with the worst case scenario and sit with that worst case scenario and then let it go and not think about it again. And then I'm like, okay, well, you know what? Good job. Good job. And so then I will internally praise myself and I'll move on to, you know, the next positive thing that happens that occurs in my life. Um, but I think that the main goal is to stop it in its tracks, to be like, uh, uh we're not going to go in that direction. And, you know, if by chance it does, you do end up having a, you know, a thought that could, you know, not be beneficial to your external reality, then you know what, just sit with it and think about what the worst case scenario is. And, you know, and what about that scenario can I control? And, okay, well, I can control this. Well, then I'm going to control this and the rest I'm going to give to this higher intelligence, to this divine intelligence. And trust implicitly that it's going to have a solution to this concern that I just worked up way better than I will because that's what I'm finding in the past is that in the past couple of months is that it's shown me repeatedly that if I just relinquish control and allow it to work on the resolution because it already has that resolution and if I, you know, am patient and let it take care of it, then I will be so much more rewarded for, you know, for letting go. Um, and, you know, it's the, it's the meditation. It's the meditation teaching me what, that my body should rather thrive on the benefits of lovingly imagine imagining lovingly rather than being fretful over everything um i don't know i feel like i'm not going to be able to do a good video tonight because i'm tired and i feel like i'm like rambling and getting off target and so um i'm gonna end this now and hope that i am not completely confusing um i don't know i'm done but you guys have a good night i love you and don't forget to live abundantly